we will uh, have the, the last presentation of this session uh, about uh, a review of mapillary generated map data and how accuracy compare across device from Said to discover uh, from community uh, man project manager from uh, Meta. So the floor is yours. Thanks, Lorenzo. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Said Turksever. I'm uh, with Meta. I work as a community project manager. And today I will walk you through to um, Mapillary's map generation workflow, as well as I will share my findings uh, to compare uh, positional accuracy across uh, different devices. That's pretty much the um, agenda for today, introduction, problem definition, and my methodology, and then uh, implementation. Then I will share uh, what are my findings and then what can be the potential future work. So, is there anyone like who have never heard of Mapillary before? We had also like how to map small town uh, by Chris. I assume like everyone knows what is Mapillary. So Mapillary is basically a street level imagery platform, uh, scales and automates mapping uh, from street level imagery. Uh, so map generation, map data generation was always uh, time consuming. And then we have uh, leg legacy solutions by collecting geodata with total station and GPS and also with mobile mapping solution. So Mapillary's approach is scaling up and automating map data generation from uh, street level imagery where you can use any kind of camera and then capture street level imagery and then upload to Mapillary and then Mapillary uh, does the job for you and then generate map data. And we will go into more details how the magic happens. So at the moment, we have 1.7 billion images on the platform. Uh, it's cross-sourced by the, by the, uh, from the community and then partners and then uh, all the OSM community uh, members who are contributing Mapillary. And then we have several integration with um, ID and JOSM, so I will also show some examples. So this is pretty much the overview of uh, Mapillary. So we have contributor network and then this group of users and people are uploading their street level imagery to Mapillary and images are uploaded to Mapillary and then we generate 3D uh, model from those images and then we generate pixel point, uh, point cloud data. And then we also um, segment and identify each pixel and then understand what are the, what, what are these uh, pixel about to extract uh, map data uh, from those imagery. And then as a result, you can have map data in uh, GeoJSON format or uh, any kind of format you want to have. As I mentioned before, you can use any camera anywhere. Uh, the only requirement is like these uh, images need to have uh, exif data, which contains latitude and longitude and capture, capture time. And then if you have those uh, metadata, you can basically upload any kind of imagery uh, to Mapillary, which makes it scalable. You can use your smartphone, action cam, dash cam, or even you can use a professional rig like Trimble and Leica's mobile, mobbing, uh, mobile mapping solutions. Uploading is pretty simple. We have several uploading tools like desktop uploader, Mapillary tools, as well as you can also upload your uh, images directly from your smartphone. And then you can browse those images uh, via Mapley web app. And then I mentioned about like 3D reconstruction and then I have short video, how does it happen? So basically when you uh, capture imagery with your smartphone, um, every, every, every second based on your uh, settings, and then we are identifying all the pixels and then with uh, SFM approach, structure from mo uh, motion approach, we generate basically a pixel point cloud uh, from those images. And then once you have this uh, 3D, 3D model, and then you can uh, real world. So how do we understand what are those objects about? As like, uh, thousands of uh, pixels, and then we have semantic segmentation approach to identify uh, each pixel. And then after that, 
uh, we uh, do like object detection. At the moment, like we detect uh, 42 uh, street uh, assets globally and then more than 1,400 uh, traffic signs uh, globally, which means that you capture data, you upload the mapillary, and then mapillary uh, generate 40, 42 street assets from those images and then 1,500 traffic sign classes uh, globally. So, and then each time when uh, new users uh, upload imagery to same location, we iterate our 3D um, reconstruction and then it helps to improve uh, our accuracy. Actually, this is one of the uh, question I was trying to answer how density of capture affects uh, positional accuracy when it comes to uh, map data extraction. And uh, so those are like some uh, objects which we generate from uh, street level imagery. And then in this uh, particular case study, I will um, deep dive into street light uh, extraction, where I did an uh, experiment of comparing um, mapillary generated street light uh, data against the ground truth data, which is survey on the ground. And all those data uh, available on uh, ID, ID editor as a mapillary map feature layer, as well as rapid uh, mapillary map feature layer, as well as we have uh, mapillary JOSM plugin where you can see mapillary imagery as well as all uh, mapillary generated map data as well as um, traffic signs. All right, we are good so far, and then we know what is mapillary and then how does it work. But when it comes to using this data, how is mapillary generated data uh, complete and accurate? So that's the question I was looking for the answer uh, in this case study. And then trying to understand the quality of mapillary generated data, and then if this data can be used to contribute OSM. And then there was always big discussion among the community that uh, how do we approach uh, machine generated data or AI generated data? So. I want to uh, further investigate that the data quality of um, Mapillary's map generation pipeline. And then particularly, I will check the completeness of Mapillary generated data and then positional accuracy of Mapillary data. And then uh, I will answer if this data can be used for uh, geospatial uh, industry as well as enriching for OSM data. All right, uh, this is my methodology. So basically I benchmark Mapillary uh, generated map data against uh, ground truth data, which contains three different steps, data collection, data processing, and data uh, analysis. And data collection uh, is partly done by um, Ordo municipality, which is, the, which is the city in Turkey, north part of Turkey. Uh, finding open data in Turkey is a big challenge. That's how I, how, how I start to involve OSM. And then, luckily, uh, all the municipalities share grant root data with me for street lights. And then I went to this city and then collect uh, street level imagery with three different devices. And then I upload those images to Mapillary, and then I verify all the street lights um, in the area of interest. And then I extracted those street lights by isolating different devices uh, to compare their uh, completeness and position like received. And then I prepare data set to perform analysis on data set. Uh, I prepare data set and then analyze the completeness of this data as well as position accuracy. That's pretty much my workflow. Street level imagery collection and getting street light ground truth data, uploading it and verifying um, uh, machine generated data to make sure that uh, if Mapillary detects um, some other objects as a street light, so I can clean up like uh, false positives and false negatives. And I extract this data, street light data. And then the problem is here I have like ground truth data and then as well as I have Mapillary generated data. So in order to uh, perform like positional accuracy and complete, completeness analysis, I need to, to pair uh, two different layer into one and then assign unique ID for each of, each of those uh, features to perform analysis. And then I can calculate like completeness and positional accuracy. And then, yeah, I share the results. So I use uh, iPhone 11 uh, as a smartphone and then I use GoPro 
uh, GoPro Hero, and then I use GoPro Max, which is 360 uh, camera. And grant your data is provided by uh, or the municipality, and then map data is generated by Mapillary. And uh, here you see uh, specs of the camera. So iPhone obviously uh, capture flat images. GoPro Hero also uh, capture flat images, but it has a wide, wide angle. And then GoPro Max um, captures 360 imagery, and then you can also see like focal length and then all the resolution. Uh, one point I want to um, address is iPhone was located inside the camera and then it affects also the visibility of the area and then uh, we will talk about it in the results. So I will uh, gear back to how having the phone inside, um, inside the vehicle uh, affects also completeness and positional accuracy. Rest of the devices uh, were uh, positioned um, on the uh, week, uh, on the roof, so you can see like on the front you have uh, I have GoPro Mac, uh, GoPro uh, Hero, then I have uh, GoPro Max. So all the mounts are like um, do it yourself. So like I work with local manufacturer to build this um, GoPro mount. Cool. And then I uh, basically collect street level imagery in this um, area of interest. Uh, which is all town in order. I use a Mapillary's uh, capture project. Cross devices, so upper right, you see um, iPhone capture images. On the upper left, you see uh, GoPro Hero, and then uh, you have uh, GoPro Max on the below. So GoPro Max gives you a better understanding of the places since it's 360 uh, imagery, but it comes with some other challenges. which is surveyed on the ground by the municipality. That's why I use this uh, data as a source of truth. And then area of interest, three, three kilometer by three kilometer. And I uh, collect street level imagery in, within 20 kilometer. Cool, uh, data processing side. So most of the processing done by Mapillary, I upload my images uh, to Mapillary, and then I ask uh, help to some of the OSM uh, contributors back in Turkey to uh, verify uh, street lights. And then as you can see in the verification tool, and then you see like, I don't know, CCTV cameras or uh, birds detected as a street light. So that helped me to clean up the data and then have only street lights. And then I extracted uh, 297 street lights uh, from, the, from the Mapler imagery. And then this is how Mapillary detects objects um, and segments all different objects uh, on the on the space. And then you can also see here uh, you have the map view that where you can see all the map features. All right, so I captured images and then Mapillary processes the data. Here I have all the street lights, but I'm curious like how this data is accurate to go to OSM or how uh, it's complete to go to OSM. So maybe Mapillary uh, detects something else as a street light. And then what I did uh, for the evaluation and analysis, so I mentioned the problem that in order to pair from analysis, and I need to pair grant through data and then uh, Mapillary generated map data, right? And then for that, um, I uh, use um, generating buffer around uh, five, 10, 10 meter radius around the ground truth data, and then you can see like three different um, detection from Mapillary, uh, which is like the green, um, yeah, like different color represent different devices, and then completeness is calculated by Mapillary number of map, uh, number of um, extracted Mapillary light, as well as uh, total number of uh, ground truth street light data. Then uh, after I calculate position accuracy. And um, yeah, every uh, municipality in Turkey like different dip different approaches, and then in order to like uh, so Mapillary data comes with the uh, geodetic coordinates, and but my grant root data was uh, Cartesian coordinates, so I need to perform uh, conversion from Cartesian coordinates to uh, geodetic coordinates. This is uh, my grant root data, and then yeah, I got Mapillary generated data and then generate buffer around ground truth data and then uh, with a 10, 10 meter of reduce. 
and then assign their ID to Grand Tour data. And as a result, um, I got a unique ID for uh, Grand Tour data and then um, Maple regenerated data. Cool. Uh, I use a special join by uh, for assigning unique ID uh, to uh, Maple detected signs, as well as I calculated a positional accuracy by um, creating like a distance metrics uh, for each uh, match pair, which gives me like basically distance uh, between uh, Grand Truth data and then Maple regenerated met data. Cool. Uh, let's move on to uh, my results. And surprisingly, to be honest, like I was expecting better completeness on GoPro Max because it's 360, you have better uh, view of everything. Um, but uh, surprisingly, GoPro Hero 7 Black achieved the highest uh, completeness uh, with 87% uh, completeness. So it means that if I would have uh, 100 uh, street, street lights uh, in the venue, uh, in the area of interest, I capture, uh, I maply could detect 80, uh, 87% of all uh, those streetlights, uh, which was the, uh, we will address uh, why a GoPro Hero uh, was the winning when it comes to completeness. And then I, as I mentioned, I use distance metrics to calculate position accuracy between each uh, pairing object. And then GoPro Max was the winning when it comes to a uh, position accuracy. And then uh, GoPro Max could achieve a uh, two meter positional accuracy, but it varies also uh, surrounding of the street lights. And then if it is like urban canyon, you can see like very outlier data. I have a few examples. So basically those are each uh, pairing um, ground truth data and detections, and then a distance between uh, those, uh, those different uh, points. And then, yeah, for, across different devices. Then I did further analysis on uh, X and Y coordinates, and I didn't find any differences, like if there is any uh, error uh, metrics when it comes to like uh, X or Y coordinates. So error was uh, homogeneously distributed uh, for the different uh, axes. And also I, I just uh, aggregate um, positional accuracy of um, traffic, traffic signs based on different um, intervals. So as you can see, like with GoPro Max, you can achieve like high resolution, uh, uh, sorry, uh, more images are between like uh, less than one meter positional accuracy. So for instance, like this is one example, which was the positional accuracy of this uh, street light was uh, around like five meter, which is, I mean, yeah, it's not great, uh, but we are using like really market camera, consumer grade camera. It's hard to achieve a lower, uh, higher resolution uh, when it comes to like urban, um, urban areas like this. But if you go to a bit more open area where G a GPS signal can be received easily, uh, it can go under uh, one, one meter position accuracy. Okay. In the last part of uh, my presentation, um, I would like to uh, address like what are my findings when it comes to completeness and position accuracy. So best result uh, is achieved for the completeness with GoPro Hero uh, 7 with 87%. And then um, for position accuracy, in terms of position accuracy, I achieved the best result with uh, GoPro Max uh, with two, two meters uh, position accuracy, which means that if uh, Grand Truth data is here and then uh, Mapplery detects it uh, on the other side uh, of the table, so it's like two meter position accuracy. So completeness is heavily dependent on, dependent on resolution of imagery, uh, which I mentioned that um, if when I use an iPhone imagery inside the vehicle, it affects um, uh, resolution of the you know images because there is a kind of fraction due to like window of the car. And then uh, image density was another parameter affects the completeness. That's why like GoPro Hero uh, 7 uh, achieved the, the most complete uh, data because with GoPro Hero, you can capture like 0 0.5 uh, time-lapse data. So which means that you have denser um, street level imagery, which means that you have denser point cloud. Uh, that was the one uh, criteria uh, parameter affects the completeness. 
Another one was large appeal of view. So when I compare uh, iPhone 11 and GoPro Max, uh, GoPro Hero, so GoPro Hero had a better, uh, higher uh, field of view, and then that's another parameter for the completeness. And then another criteria, which is not really related with Mapillary, also it's important, like visibility of, uh, of the um, object in the real world. And then if, if they're like hidden under trees or whatever, so unfortunately you cannot really uh, catch it. And when it comes to positional accuracy, a precision of GPS receiver is one of the most important uh, parameter uh, for extracting um, map data from street level imagery because the image just comes with geotag. If you have uh, better accuracy when it comes to GPS, better telemetry means better uh, data uh, extraction. And then uh, iPhone had a, also like GSM, which means which allows like triangulation of the iPhone location. And I noticed that iPhone's position like you see is uh, good enough because it was assisted uh, by the uh, telecommunication network. And then density of um, capture also important for achieving a higher uh, position like you see. And then yeah, density of uh, imagery is also still a uh, important parameter for having a higher position accuracy. And then obviously like if you have 360 imagery, you can have better 3D reconstruction result, uh, which I show the example like when we upload data to Mapillary, so we basically uh, create like 3D model of the space, right? And uh, yeah, and then those are my results. And as a feature, uh, this case study can be extended to different map features like traffic signs, or any kind of uh, mapillary features, which I was listed in the beginning of my presentation. And then I really want to uh, figure out like how position like accuracy and uh, completeness is changing based on different areas. How is it uh, in urban areas? How is it in uh, rural areas? And if you can uh, find out any uh, conclusion from there. And then another potential um, improvement can be like, how do we use external GPS uh, antennas to improve uh, our telemetry and then, you know, process, um, process this um, external GPS data with our images to achieve better position accuracy. And then uh, another potential future work is uh, implementing similar case study with um, high resolution uh, um, mobile mapping uh, cameras as well as uh, better, better GPS antenna but this will definitely affect the cost uh, of data collection and data extraction. And that's pretty much all. Thank you for your attention and then uh, joining the uh, talk today. And then, yeah, here are my details. If you want to learn more about uh, methodology, I can also share a presentation. If you have any other question related uh, mapillary, metas, uh, mapping, open mapping efforts, I'm uh, around, happy to talk. Thank you so much. Thank you, Saeed. I remind you that if you have a question, you can do it via venueless. I have a question for you, as I told you before. Uh, just, but if you have question, on, also if you have access to venueless, do it as things. I will there a lot of questions, so we can vote between us, which is the one of the main important one. I will just start with one, but I don't want to take time. Uh, do you try to measure the ground pixel? Because I saw that the GoPro Max has a high number of pixels, but they are on a big field of view while the GoPro and the standard GoPro, let's say, have a, a lower with, with number of pixels, but it's a short, it's a narrow field of view. So this can also affect the result, do you believe? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I haven't done any analysis on image level, but I hear you and then I think doing a image level analysis on pixel size uh, may really uh, also affect the results. Uh, what I have noticed with GoPro, like GoPro Max, uh, I use a time-lapse um, mode to, for capturing um, basically imagery, and then it means that you get less dense images. So if I would have, um, I don't know, same uh, parameter as I did uh, with GoPro Hero 7, like one, uh, 0 0.5 uh, time-lapse, probably I could achieve the same level of completeness uh, at that time, but I haven't done any uh, image level analysis on pixel size yet. Okay, thank you. Um, so, do you plan to anything like like uh, improve of the provision of the positional accuracy on the uploaded images on server side? 
Yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. So basically, since we can uh, get any, like images from any camera and any devices, and uh, images can uh, come like various various quality. Uh, yeah, we don't uh, have a ready product to you know like fixing the position of images uh, anytime soon. But yeah, I think it's really good feedback. Like we can, we should we we can definitely work on like improving our you know, like uh, alignment to roads, et cetera. But this will affect also our 3D generation. So we, we also need like raw data to build a 3D construction, right? And that's why uh, we need to uh, think of like how this will affect our overall map data generation pipeline. But definitely there is a, a lot of room to improve uh, visualization of the, uh, you know, overall like uh, web coverage. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so it's uh, given the mapillary no longer offer post upload option to correct position and direction of data. I assume you are quite happy with the result archive with your point cloud algorithms. Excuse me. I'm... They're saying that the, there is no more the option to uh, post upload the, to correct the post upload the, the images. So do you believe that the algorithm, the cloud, the point cloud algorithms are enough to correct these kind of errors? Yeah, um, yeah, we had this feature like what well, I mean, let me give you a bit background for this question, because uh, previously when you upload your images, you can go to web app and then uh, edit your uh, traces, basically the, you know, the traces you uploaded, basically your telemetry with images. But at the moment we don't have this feature, uh, but this can be either done on server side uh, or we, we can think of like bringing this um, feature back. Yeah, but for now, like there is a workaround if you have uh, access to JoySM. So basically, before uploading, you can also have an overview of your uh, mapper imagery and their location. And if there is any outlier, you can uh, easily fi fix with JoySM and then uh, upload. Um, I mean, fix it before upload it. Yeah, but definitely, like uh, there is a chance to also fix it on server side. Okay, so uh, another question. Uh, what is your overall recommendation for um, a mapper, OSM mapper using mapillary? Don't always trust the estimated position, verify the data on the field, say the, the, the data that you show, or collect more images before mapping. What should, do you think that improve the, the, that kind of thing? Yeah, like, I mean, I did this uh, case study uh, to answer the data quality of mapillary uh, map data generation. And I don't think that like OSM mappers really need to do like uh, on field data collection as like, or searching for ground truth data. Um, yeah, I mean, GoPro Max is great camera. Uh, GoPro Hero is really good. Like it's, uh, I mean, it allows you to capture dense, dense images. So yeah, I mean, collecting data on field is amazing, but you don't have really chance to uh, collect data on the field all the time. Uh, street level imagery brings um, easier approach to digitize uh, any kind of object, what you're seeing in the real world and then mapping them on OSM. This is actually how I start to really like using Mapillary back in 2016. So I was mapping accessible places in my city and then previously I was using field, field paper and then I was going like, POI by POI to check accessibilities, but I find it like Maple is great. Like you just drive once and then you see uh, all the surrounding, you sit down on your PC and then uh, map the accessibilities. So it depends like what uh, kind of purpose um, you are mapping for, but yeah, I, I would be okay with like field uh, data collection, but it's time consuming. Yeah, just one last question, uh, just a little bit. Do you find cases in which the, the, word, uh, the mapillary extract data about the light, uh, by the light that was not really on your data set? Do you find uh, maybe not with your methodology, methodology would not be possible, but there were more uh, light extracted than the one that exists in your database? So there is like the algorithm inventing or finding new, wrongly things. Um, new features, you mean? Yes. Yeah, at the moment, like we have only 42. Um, uh, like in your, your cases, in your, your cases that you do the, the comparison, do you find that mapillary produce more data? There could be some kind of error or was already, let's say, there was maybe some data missing or something like that? 
Uh, I'm not really sure if I got the question right. <laughs> I don't want to misunderstand. Yeah. Oh, false well, positives. Okay. So as I mentioned, like uh, there, there, there was a, a verifier tool to clean up those false positives. Uh, yeah, I think it's a great tool to clean up the first uh, false positives. Yeah. If that helps. Uh. Yeah. Last last question. Um, so do you have a recommendation for uh, uh, rigs uh, for uh, uh, collecting images? Uh, um, so how do you set up all the, the collection of the images? Do you have any suggestions? One would like to have something similar. Yeah, sure. Um, so there are like plenty of like uh, recommended mounts. Uh, if you, I mean, it depends like which device you want to use for data collection. For smartphone, if you are collecting data with uh, uh, by bicycle, you can have uh, definitely like the mount for bicycle um, and then we have like community users. I mean, we are also learning a lot from our community users. Like we have community users, they are collecting uh, data like with the, you know, helmet, uh, which has a, you know, mount att attached. And then it's different uh, device uh, may have like different, uh, you know, uh, setup. And then we have um, forum, Mapillary forum, where uh, we are sharing like best practices and, uh, you know, recommended um, mounts. Uh, for the, for the community, I think, uh, yeah, it's a great place to check and then how people are uh, doing. Also, we have some car mount remain. Uh, we can also hand it over here. So you can basically attach it to your car and then capture uh, mapillary imagery while you're driving without you know, obstructing your, of course, uh, vision. Yeah. So thank you so much, Said. If you have any question, you can move later to Said and to speak with Yeah, you. thank you.